I don't... Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my May wrap up for 2021 part 5 of 5. I read a total of 25 books this month. So if you're interested in hearing about the other books I read, I will leave the links to all the other wrap ups down below. These are the last 5 books that I read for this month so without further ado, let us get started. So the first book I'm going to talk about is A Dark and Secret Place by Jen Williams. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So after her mother suicide, Heather returns home to begin clearing out her belongings and that's when she finds an old tin of letters between her mother and the Red Wolf, a notorious serial killer named Michael Reeves. He has been serving jail time for the past 20 years and many of his victims have been unfound. Heather really wants answers about what happened between this man and her mother so she strikes a deal with the police if she is able to go in and get Michael to talk about his victims and what happened to them and where they are buried, then she is also able to ask him some more personal questions that she wants to know more about. So as she continuously visits Michael in jail, she makes some very shocking discoveries along the way and it's like the story of that. So I found this thriller to be pretty predictable. I was able to call a lot of what was going to happen. There were some twists and turns that I didn't see coming so that was a nice balance. Balance. I listened to this on audiobook and the narrator did a really good job. Michael is very, very creepy and I really liked how we got chapters from before so we were able to see how Michael became the killer that he was. I also think that Heather was a pretty interesting character. She was very persistent on discovering what she wanted to know. She was an ex-journalist so you could really see that in her personality. I think that the first half of the book was pretty slow but that's because we are getting the backstory on the characters and what the Red Wolf was all about so it's understandable. The second half of the book is where I actually became invested in the story and wanted to know more so that's why I only gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars because the first half just didn't really interest me that much. And then I also didn't give it a very high rating because I was not a fan of the romance in this and I think that it should have just been left out because it didn't really have a purpose to the story. So overall I think it was a pretty solid thriller, just not the best one I've ever read. So 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have, I am very disappointed at myself and the book for because it is Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars which I had thought that it was going to be a 5 out of 5 stars for me so that's where I'm disappointed. So this book follows two witches who are sworn enemies and they have to make an alliance with each other in order to overthrow the current ruler of the land. One is out for revenge while the other one it just wants to see a positive change in their world. Like I said, I struggled with this one. It is just a very dense, complex fantasy, which I don't think I was prepared for. Like, I was 215 pages into this book and had absolutely no idea what was going on, who was who. There are so many characters in this and I just don't know if I wasn't paying enough attention to understand it or what, but I was so lost. <laughs> Like the only thing I really got in those 215 pages was that Ira wanted revenge and Jasmine wanted change. I did really like how the two characters were very morally grey, but I also found it very hard to tell them apart from one another because they just kind of merged together in my head. The beginning of the book is very, very slow because it's the whole backstory of everything and it doesn't really pick up until like this much left of the book. There isn't really any action until the very ending of the book and when that happened I was pretty invested in the story and wanted to know what the heck was going on but up until that point I was so confused that I just wanted to finish the book to say that I finished it. I am thinking about rereading the book though because the sequel is going to come out and I am interested in it and I don't know if it, like I said, it was my little brain that wasn't working well or what because I do want to love this book and I do want to understand it so we'll see if we ever reread it but for what I actually understood I liked it but 
my brain is little, so I don't know. Next I have This Is All Your Fault by Amina May Safi, and I give this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This is another one I was really disappointed in. After hearing about the indie bookstore that they work out shutting down, three very different women decide that they are going to save it, and it's like the story of that. The premise of this book had me very interested in the story. It takes place at a bookstore, so I mean, what's not to love? But the three main points of views all annoyed me in some form, so that just brought me right out of the story. So we have Danielle, who is the cool blonde who also has some anxiety problems. We have Rin, who is the perfect booktuber who also has a crush on another employee named AJ. And then we have Imogen, who is the very impulsive, depressed girl. Right off the bat, the first scene that we get with Imogen is her coming to the bookstore very distraught she locks herself into a bathroom and then shaves her head. And her whole reason for doing that was because she was depressed and that's the first characterization that we get from her and really the only depression representation that we get from Imogen and it just rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know if it's just me but I just was not a fan of that and thought that it shouldn't have been included, honestly. I do think that the anxiety and panic disorder representation in Daniela was good, though, so I mean, I guess it counterbalanced each other. Pretty much the first half of the book is just these three girls in her monologue badmouthing each other and hating on each other, and I just wasn't a fan of that. I do like how the story ended up though with the three girls becoming friends and realizing that they have more in common than they once realized, but I will say that the book is apparently taking place in the span of one day and they have all been working at this bookstore for a very long time together, so I feel like this change of heart that they got would not come in the span of a day just because they're trying to save this bookstore, like, they would have been talking to each other. They would have figured out that they have more in common than they thought before this if they really were, you know, together all the time. I did like some of the interactions between the girls and the customers, though. I think that those were probably the most enjoyable parts of the book for me, which were very far and few between, so I mean 2.5 out of 5 stars. It wasn't my favorite thing in the entire world. Next up I have Late to the Party by Kelly Quindolin and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows 17 year old Cody who thinks that she has not experienced what most 17 year olds have experienced at this time in their life and so when her two best friends Maritza and Jacori suggest that they step outside of their comfort zone and attend a party she is a little bit hesitant. Cody believes that parties are only for the cool straight people not people like Jacori, Maritza, and herself so when she stumbles upon one of these cool kids named Ricky kissing another boy in secret it kind of sparks an unexpected friendship between the two. When he introduces her to his other friends, she meets a girl named Lydia who she begins to fall for during this summer of new experiences that she is not ready to share with Maritza and Jacori, and it's like the story of that. This was another average read for me. I enjoyed my time reading it, but I don't think it was anything particularly memorable. I did find Cody to be very relatable in her feelings and lack of experience because I was the exact same way when I was 17 years old. I also really liked Ricky and his crew. I loved how they brought Cody into their group right away and were just so accepting of her. I also really liked how this wasn't just about Cody and her struggles. A lot of the side characters were also dealing with some issues and it wasn't just like a main focus on Cody. I also really liked the relationship between Lydia and Cody. I loved how slowly they fell for each other. It was just very sweet. I think that the biggest complaint I have about the book was the relationship or friendship between Maritza Jacori and Cody. I think that it was very toxic and I just wasn't a fan of it and I get that that was the point of the book but I just wanted them to have a simple conversation with each other, maybe talk about what was bothering all of them and it would have been resolved. 
you know, rather than just blatantly ignoring and lying each other for the entire summer. I am just not a fan of the miscommunication tropes, so I did not like that aspect of the story, so that definitely brought the rating down for me. But like I said, overall, I think that it was a very average read, so three out of five stars. And then the final book that I read for the month of May was Squad by Mariah McCarthy. I give this a two out of five stars. It follows Jenna, who is a junior in high school, as well as a cheerleader. She has always felt very close to her squad of cheerleaders until her best friend, Regine, starts to ignore her, shut her out, and she doesn't really know why. So when Regine starts to hang out with another girl on the squad, Jenna becomes very jealous and eventually ends up seeking revenge, and it's like the story of that. The book was very fast-paced. I read it in one sitting. It's a very quick read. I could not connect with any of these characters. Jenna was a lot. I do think that she was treated unfairly and I do understand her feelings and think they are justified, but the things that she did were very questionable and I get that that's the whole point of the story, but I just found her to be a little bit unhinged. I did like when the story went away from Jenna seeking revenge on Regine and focused more about her discovering herself through different means, but then it went back to Jenna being obsessive and by that point I was just over it so yeah two out of five stars this was not my cup of tea. Alright everybody so that was my May wrap of 2021 part 5 of 5 if you are interested in the other books I read I will leave them linked down below so you guys can check those out. Let me know down below if you read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all on my next video. Goodbye!